as well with Stanford USC. Uh, USC, uh, the de facto uh, favorite there in the Pac-12 and typically the team with the most talent in the conference, but it's been the North Division dominating in recent years with Stanford and Oregon uh, and especially the Cardinal in play with four consecutive wins against USC and the Trojans looking awfully sloppy against Western Michigan. Yeah, so this is a really hard game for me to figure out because, like you said, USC has the most talent in the conference. That's been the case for the last decade, the last two decades. And ever since Pete Carroll left, USC has not been able to live up to the expectations. I've said this before. I think the problem with USC and programs like them in Miami, if they don't overwhelm you with NFL talent across the board, they tend to underachieve. And you saw some signs last week of a USC team that totally expected to just walk in get an easy win against Western Michigan, and the Broncos weren't having it. Western Michigan ran for 263 yards against USC in that game. If the Trojans' run defense looks just as bad as it did a week ago, how do they expect to slow down Stanford in that rushing attack and a David Shaw offensive line? That is a big concern of mine if I'm a USC fan going into this game, not to mention the fact that Sam Darnold threw two picks and looked very shaky in the season opener, his worst game probably of his career. But on the other side with Stanford, I have my questions about them as well. I mean, they're typically a very consistent team. Bryce Love, by all accounts, is going to be a good running back for them. But he's not Christian McCaffrey, and I don't think anyone expects him to be. But last year, Stanford, in two games against ranked teams, scored 11 points total. They scored five points against Colorado and six points against Washington. They did not play well against the best competition they faced. Now you take Christian McCaffrey out and you ask Stanford to try and go up against this USC team that has all that talent, I just am nervous one way or the other. I don't have a pick in this game. I know you want me to give you one, but I really don't know. I think it's going to be a close game. We're going to find out a lot about both of these teams this week. I think USC should win. They're the more talented team, but – I mean, you can't help but be nervous after what you saw last week. Yeah, with uh, Western Michigan going out there to uh, the Coliseum, uh, coming off what they did last year, obviously, P.J. Fleck gone and uh, Corey Davis at wide receiver. But uh, considering they had the top recruiting class three consecutive years, and I know it's the MAC, but they did, that was one game at 27 and a half, and the other one was Maryland going to Texas. And I fully thought that the Longhorns would win the game, but Maryland getting 19. Those were the two-point spreads that jumped off the board at me uh, mm-hmm. last week and, and turned out to be uh, – near upsets and in one case uh, Maryland pulled it off a 51 41 so uh, if somebody wants to grab your picks and, and uh, get the full rundown and everything else it's at uh, college football country yep cfbcountry.com uh, I've got my picks up today also the podcast the college football country podcast it's on iTunes Stitcher you can find it on my Twitter feed uh, Chris Felica from from college game day came on gave out some outstanding picks we got a couple locks for you this week I had a lock, but the game got canceled in the South Florida UConn game. I was giving out the under. Now that game was canceled because of the weather. But uh, yeah, a lot of great picks there. And uh, my good friend Rossi Three Stacks, he's become a, a cult hero on the podcast already. He comes in and gives you some teaser bets. So it's a lot of fun. And if you need another college football podcast, it's a good one to check out. So Josh, when you're uh, looking at the games uh, each and every week, uh, what's, what's your typical uh, strategy in looking at these games and, and trying to come up with a winner? Well, I mean, honestly, I, I dig into as many trends as I can. I try and find some sort of edge that way. But I think one thing that people tend to do uh, that's a mistake is they overreact to whatever happened the week before. And you see lines move radically one way or another because USC is a good example. Oh, well, USC is – they struggle with Western Michigan. we got to dumb that line down to six points. That line probably would have been bigger if it weren't for, the, for them struggling last week. USC, probably not as bad as we saw a week ago. Another great example is Purdue and Ohio. That's a Friday night game, but Purdue is a four-point favorite against Ohio. Purdue got dominated against Louisville, and thanks to turnovers, Louisville wasn't able to really pull away in that game. But I think people think, oh, well, maybe Purdue is a little bit better. Purdue lost by 50 points in any game that mattered a year ago. They're not that much better this season. So I, I tend to try and find those kind of games. It's where are we overreacting? Where is the public maybe finding a little bit too much faith in an underdog who had a great week or a big favorite who had a bad week. Teams are never as good or as bad as they were the week before, and that's where I try and exploit uh, my, my mismatches. But, uh, it, look, it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to find winners every week. We went 5-2 and two last week, 
And hopefully we'll try and build on that uh, and have another winning season uh, in 2017. And folks, if you don't follow betting or predicting five and two against the spreads, uh, pretty serious stuff. So if you can keep it up anywhere close to so that, far, you know, so that, far, <laughs> yeah. It, hey, I'm in the same boat. You can never get too confident after a good week and think, "Hey, I got this whipped." Because man, it, uh, humility comes very quickly uh, in the prediction game. There's no doubt about that.